Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the daily chart of silver, and you can see here that uh, we're making, well, we're not making new lows. I'm going to call this new lows because when we look over at the real price of silver, we're actually in new lows of the recent past. But uh, you can see the huge volume that's come in. Let's go to the five minute chart. You can see with uh, their smack down here, of course, this is silver that doesn't exist. Uh, we're getting new lows, so it's a great time to stack. Now, as I said, the price of the paper silver is not reflected in the physical silver. So we're going to go and do a comparison of what's really available. Now, the other chart I want to look at real quick here is the euro. Uh, this is really fairly ominous. If you've followed what's going on in Europe, it's it's almost like the countries of Europe are committing national suicide. This kind of thing has been going on for a long time. Um, just a personal opinion, it's my opinion that Europe is a post-Christian society and um, they're just going down the tubes. That's the only way to describe it. Now, let's jump over to the Bitcoin chart because that was a big, big mover and a lot of people were getting into it. Um, some people have gotten into it recently at the top and it's gone down. Um, that's one of those things, you, it's just like silver. You either believe in it or you don't believe it. And if you don't believe in it, then no price is a good price. If you believe in it, then the lowest price is the best price. I personally think that uh, there's gonna be a pullback and some consolidation here. This is the Huobi chart, and I want to point out to you the difference between the dollar price in China is around 400, Bitfinex is around 377, 367 on the Russian exchange, Bitstamps right there at 375, so about a $25 difference between the US and China. Now we know, I've talked about before, that uh, this thing is being driven primarily out of China. It kind of looked like a top to me because the volume was 90, 95% Chinese going into the top and then it was uh, about 80%, 20%. So you can see here, let's do the uh, comparison of the exchanges. So we're back up to 87% of Chinese being the total volume of Bitcoin with America, the US dollar coming in at 11.69%. And then you've got the Euro in third place here at 0.84%. So if Bitcoin is some kind of proxy for what's coming, then this is another indication here that Europe is absolutely dead. That they don't have any money. Um, they're going downhill. Now it's not that far-fetched to think about Bitcoin being a indicator of things to come. And the reason why is that the Chinese have all the money. We know they have about $22 trillion in savings and I'm gonna cover the debt here and the amazing story about our debt and what the Congress, our irresponsible pathological Congress has done. So it seems to me that Bitcoin really is become kind of the leader of trends and I fully expect that silver is going to follow. That's going to be a very good thing for the people who are stacking the Lunar Series because I think the Chinese are going to want to buy those. So let's go and look at the debt. Now this is new because as you know I always follow the debt to the penny and I use a year time frame. The reason why I use the year time frame is because you can't trust anything the government says about the debt except for just the raw figures. When they talk about our projections are showing it going down or we've got this, we've got that, you really can't trust anything they say. But these figures are pretty much solid. These are just the reported figures of what the debt actually is. We know around March, I started to point out, we, we hit that 18,152, you can see. And that 18,152 lasted all the way until we had the resignation of John Boehner. 
and the shenanigans going on in the Congress. It's absolutely crazy. But here's the new figure. This is from yesterday. We've got 18.609 trillion. All we have to do to see what the deficit really is, not what they say it is, but what it really is, is just go back a year. Now this is gonna be a floating average, but it's fairly accurate. So we're at 17.923 and 18.609. So we're talking about roughly $700 billion. $700 billion annual deficit. That's what we're looking at. That's really, really bad. Now we know that the debt is gonna end up doubling under Obama, roughly 10 trillion of debt when he came in, gonna be about 20 trillion in debt when he leaves. Now. A lot of people are going to say that's the worst president in history. Well, it's going to be close to a tie because Bush actually did the exact same thing in eight years, a doubling of the debt. So we'll see who's next up. I think it's going to be Trump. I think just probably anecdotally because he's the biggest expert we have in bankruptcy. So maybe they're going to put Trump in there to oversee the bankruptcy. Now I want to look at an article about Social Security. This is an enormous Ponzi scheme that's going on here. Uh, it's getting worse and worse. This one's from Simon Black, but uh, Social Security already is uh, insolvent in my opinion. They've already mixed the funds with the general fund. People still talk about the term the lockbox or the fund, there isn't any. The The money for Social Security goes right into the general fund. It's just another tax, and that's why they are allowed to refer to it as an entitlement. Because indeed, it is an entitlement. They just simply tax you a certain amount, and then they give out a certain amount. So this is from Simon Black. On August 14, 1935, President Franklin Roosevelt arrived at his desk to sign the Social Security Act into law. It had been a contentious legislative process, something like the Obamacare of its day. Fiscally conservative politicians derided the program for its obvious long-term costs, the massive bureaucracy that it would create, and the huge tax increase that it represented on workers. But Roosevelt was able to find support and the law passed. And just before signing it, he proudly proclaimed that the law would go down in history, quote, as a protection to future administrations of the government against the necessity of going deeply into debt to furnish relief to the needy. Needless to say, that didn't happen. Quite the opposite, actually. Just like most Western governments, the U.S. government has gone deeply into debt to fund its social insurance programs. Officially, the U.S. government is now $18.5 trillion. You can see that it went up since he wrote this, it's 18.6 trillion in debt and social security is the biggest financial sinkhole in America. Social security's various trust funds currently hold about 2.7 trillion in total assets, yet the government itself estimates the program's liabilities to exceed 40 trillion. That's the thing I told you about, about people talking about the trust fund. There is no trust fund, there's just bonds and uh, they're not gonna be paid. And Social Security's biggest trust fund, the Disability Insurance Fund, will be fully depleted in a matter of weeks. The trustees who manage these massive funds on behalf of the current future retirees of America are clearly concerned. In the 2015 report of the Social Security and Medicare Board of Trustees, they stated very plainly, quote, Social Security as a whole, as well as Medicare, cannot sustain projected long-run program costs and that the government should be giving the public adequate time to prepare. Wow. Now we always hear politicians say that Social Security is going to be just fine. So this board of trustees must be a bunch of wackos. Who are these guys anyway? The Treasury Secretary of the United States of America, as it turns out, along with the Secretary of Health and Human Services, the Secretary of Labor, etc. These are the folks who signed their name to the report saying that Social Security is going bust and that Congress needs to give people time to prepare. And prepare they should. The U.S. Government Accountability Office recently released a report showing that tens of millions of Americans haven't saved a penny 
for retirement and roughly half of baby boomers have zero retirement savings. This means that there's an overwhelming number of Americans pinning all of their retirement hopes on Social Security. Bad idea. In a recently proposed resolution, H. Res. 488, Congress states point blank that Social Security was never intended by Congress to be the sole source of retirement income for families. Apparently, they got the message from the Social Security trustees and they want to start preparing people for the inevitable truth. This is no longer some wild conspiracy theory. The Treasury Secretary is saying it. Congress is saying it. The numbers are screaming it. Social Security is going to fail. Ultimately, this is just another chapter in the same story that government cannot be relied on to provide or produce only to squander and fail. Sure, their intentions may be noble, but this level of serial incompetence can no longer be trusted, nor should we be foolish enough to believe that some new candidate can fix it. If you're in your 50s and beyond, you're probably going to be okay. At least get 10 to 15 years of benefits. If you're in your 40s and below, you have to be 100% prepared to fend for yourself. Fortunately, you have time to recover, time to build, and time to learn. Financial literacy is absolutely critical here. And then we get a, a promo for Simon Black. So I think the situation is even more dire than that. I think even if you're in your 50s, you really need to prepare for Social Security to not be there. So what better way of preparing than buying physical silver? Now, I told you that I'm looking at new lows in the silver price, and that's because I'm looking at the price for silver eagles and also the price for these 90% bags. So you can see here we've got a low of 1335. Now it is interesting that we don't have anything from Kitco or Atmex, but we do have silver.com coming in at 1335. And you can see here with the calculator that 1335 divided by the 71.5 in that 100 ounce bag is going to give you a price of 18.6. That's $18.60. Now that's nowhere near the spot price and that's still a good $4 above spot, but that is the lowest price we've seen in recent times for junk silver. So that's a kind of pattern that we've seen in the past. They have a kind of bottom that's put in when they push things as low as they can possibly push them and then there's a shortage and then prices rise and things start to settle down that's what happened in here now we're starting to see this thing roll over and we're actually getting uh, some supply coming in so now is one of the best times to stack junk silver it's actually cheaper now than it has been even through we'll go out through this chart here uh, all of this time frame, all of August, all of the summer, it's actually cheaper now at a higher price than it was back at these low prices because it just simply wasn't available or it was so high above spot. At one point, I was seeing $22, $23, and $24 an ounce for junk silver, and now you're seeing $18.60. So if that's your choice uh, of what you want to stack, it's probably a pretty good time to start stacking junk silver. We may go lower and uh, find a new point where they run out but right now at 1860 that's a great deal now of course uh, I'm gonna go with my favorite and that's gonna be this lunar monkey this is just the Atmex price you may be able to find something better this is 1191 for a hundred or more I think they have about a thousand uh, they have 839 um, going by the past performance that we've seen with the last half ounce lunar series coins uh, I'm definitely gonna have to go with this one as well I think it's gonna be the best performer now I don't think there are a lot of people who like this design and I've been following what's available I don't think a lot of these are being ordered and you have to remember that the Perth Mint or does the half ounce coin and the two ounce coin 
based on demand. The one ounce coin gets a 300,000 minting automatically, but the half ounce and the two ounce coins are only minted based upon demand. And I'm seeing very, very low demand for these coins. And if that's the case, and I think it has to do with the design, I think it's going to be just unpopular because of that. And it may turn out that if this coin is very unpopular, then it may have a very, very low mintage on these half ounce coins. Uh, we could actually be seeing a record low mintage. So I'm thinking this is going to be a fantastic deal. Um, I'm all thumbs up for this coin. So back to the main story there putting silver into new real lows, not new paper lows, but you can see it took massive volume to get this done. We're gonna wait and see if we can make new paper lows, and then we're gonna to have to check and see what the price is uh, on the physical at that time. And we'll talk to you next time.